Last time, we learned that images are mathematically represented as matrices of numbers. This is perhaps the most important fundamental concept in machine vision, because once we recognize that images are numbers, we realize that we can perform mathematical operations on the images. Most of the entire field of machine vision consists of figuring out what mathematical operations and algorithms we can apply to our images in order to obtain answers to the questions that we are asking of our images. Today, we'll be going over a few simple mathematical operations that are particularly useful in machine vision. We'll start with image subtraction and we'll apply it in two different kinds of situations, both of them with the purpose of isolating a single object in an image. Then we'll look at a kind of averaging operation that will help us find the location of the isolated object. First, let's look back at the color example we did earlier. Here, we split an image up into its individual color components. However, our single color images did not very effectively isolate individual objects. Here's why. Notice that in all of these images, red, green, and blue, the target color is bright in its image and dark in the other images. But some colors, most notably white, is bright in all three images. That's because with light, white is made by combining red, green, and blue light. In other words, an object that is completely red might have an RGB value of 25500, making it show up bright in the red image and dark in the other two images. But an object that is completely white might have an RGB value of 255, 255, 255, making it show up bright in all three color images. What if we want to get an image that shows us just the red objects as bright and all other colors, including white, as dark? We could accomplish this by using image subtraction. Suppose we have one red pixel with an RGB value of 25500 and one white pixel with an RGB value of 255, 255, 255. The red image would show two pixels that are both completely bright, 255, 255. And the green image would show two pixels where the first is dark, and the second is light, 0, 255. Suppose we then take the red image and subtract the green image. What would we get? We would get two pixels, 255, 0. In other words, the red pixel has stayed bright, but the white pixel has gone dark. Let's try this in our Python code. First, up at the top, let's make sure that Python understands that we want to treat these images as matrices so that we can perform matrix math operations on them. Add np.matrix to each of the red, green, and blue images. Okay, now let's do the image subtraction. Red only equals red minus green. Okay, but there's a problem with the way we wrote this in our code. Remember that each of our pixels is represented by an 8-bit number that ranges between 0 and 255. Suppose we have a pixel in the image that is green. 
so that the red value is low and the green value is high. Our 8-bit value doesn't have the capacity to handle negative numbers. If we don't deal with this now, we're going to get some strange results. Luckily, NumPy has an easy way to change how numbers are digitally represented. Let's make each of these matrices be represented as int 16 values instead. That will give us 16 bits to hold the values, and it will also allow the values to be a negative. As a bit of an aside, if we say that a value is going to be stored as an int, it means that it can be either positive or negative. If we say it is a uint, that means it can only be positive because the u stands for unsigned. For example, if a variable is a uint8, that means it has 8 bits and it can range from 0 to 255 because it can only be positive. If we say that the number is an int8, it still has 8 bits, but now it can range from negative 127 to positive 127 because it can be signed. So let's do red only equals np.int16 red minus np.int16 green. This will force the red and green images to be stored as int16 values. Okay, now I want to look at the red only image. But now the matrix red only isn't a valid image matrix. It could have negative numbers. In order to be valid as an image, the matrix must have values only between 0 and 255. There's an easy way for us to fix this. Let's say that every element of the red-only matrix that is below 0 should be assigned to the value 0. We can do that like this. Red-only, every element that is less than 0, becomes 0. And every element of the red-only matrix that is greater than 255 should be assigned the value 255, like this. Red-only every element that is greater than 255 should become 255. Finally, let's make sure that the red only matrix is represented as an unsigned 8-bit integer. Red only equals np.uint8 red only. Finally, let's show the red only image cv2 dot im show red only that's the title of the figure red only that's the matrix that we want to show in the image now let's test this with our color shape pieces Now, there are still some colors that our red minus green solution will not have taken care of. Suppose an object has a high value of red, a low value of green, and a high value of blue. For example, a magenta color would have high values of red and blue, but a low value of green. We can fix this by subtracting the blue matrix also. Back here, we'll add minus np.int16 blue. Now that we have one bright object alone in the camera view with everything else dark, could we find the pixel location of this object? One way to do this would be to find the center of brightness of the image in the same way that we could find the center of mass of an object. Here's how this method works. 
Suppose we have a very low resolution image matrix like this. This matrix represents one bright object among a dark background. First, we sum the columns of this matrix like this. Next, we multiply each of these sums by the number of the column, like this. Then we sum the results. Finally, we take the total sum of all of the values in the whole original matrix and we divide by it like this. This result tells us the column center of brightness of the image. Now, obviously, this is a major pain to do by hand. Let's see how we could add this to our Python code. The first step in the algorithm is to sum the columns of the image matrix. The image matrix that we are using here is the red only matrix. Let's create a variable called column sums which will be equal to a matrix then we need to sum the columns and to do that we'll use the function sum from numpy the function sum takes in one input that is the matrix we want to sum and then the second input is the axis along which we want to sum the values. If we put zero here, that means we're going to be summing the columns. If we would put one, we would be summing the rows. In an RGB image, we could even sum the colors by putting a two here. Since we want to sum the columns, we'll put zero. Next, I need to create a vector that holds the number of the column for the entire matrix. I'll call this variable column numbers. This will also be a matrix. And here we'll use the numpy function a range. Note that this is not the word a range, which has two R's. This is a function called a range that gives us a range of numbers, so it only has one R. The input is the number of numbers that we want. So if we do 640 here, we'll get a list of numbers between 1 and 640. Now, I need to take the column sums and multiply it by the column numbers. Let's make a new variable called column mult for multiply. Here we'll use the numpy function multiply. Multiply does something that's known as element wise multiplication with vectors or matrices. If we give multiply an input that is two vectors or two matrices, what we'll get out will be a vector or a matrix that has the same dimensions as the input and contains the multiplication of each element in that matrix. So in other words, np.multiply does not do the dot product or the cross product. It does an element by element multiplication, which is what we want here. The things we want to multiply are column sums times column numbers. Okay, the next step now is to add up this result. 
all of the multiplied numbers. So we'll create a variable called total and we'll do np.sum column mult. We don't need to give an axis here because column mult is a vector. It only has one axis. Now I need to take this total and divide it by the sum of the entire original image matrix. So let's create another variable. I'll call this one total total. It's the sum of all of the pixels in the red only matrix. So we'll do np.sum of np.sum red only. The sum on the inside will sum the columns of red only and then the sum on the outside will take the sum of the sums and we'll get a value that is the sum of all the values in red only. So the last step in this algorithm is to divide total by total total. The column location is total divided by the total total. In order to check if this is working, I'm going to put in print column location. That way, as we run it, the column location will show in the Python shell. So now let's test this. Notice as I slide the red object to the left, the column location value becomes smaller. And as I slide the red object to the right, the column location value becomes larger. The maximum will be 640 since that's the total number of columns I have, and the minimum should approach zero. Keep in mind that having your hand in the view of the camera will skew the results since skin is often picked up as a red color by the camera. We've now learned how to use image subtraction to isolate an object of a particular color on the screen. And we've learned how to use the center of mass method to find the location of an isolated object. In the next video, we'll learn about another application of image subtraction, which is known as background subtraction.